Hello. Hello. Hello, am I audible? for any certification related trainings for ACP, AC, BAP or CCBA, you can check out this site techcanvas.com and in case also if you are looking for any domain related training like finance, insurance and uh, data analytics for the business analyst, you can explore this website. So that's all about it, uh, techcanvas. So now let's get started. So I do believe that like uh, the reason why you all have joined this session is that like either you are interested in doing CCBA or CPAP certification or like or you are already uh, doing your revision uh, with respect to the certification. So the agenda for today's session is generically I will introduce you to like uh, the strategy for both CCB and CBAP certifications and then we will go through some mock questions like uh, from the Tech Canvas question bank from 10 to 20 questions we will go through and uh, after that I will go through all your questions like all your questions related to the certification and everything right we will discuss that so with that uh, let's get started so first and foremost uh, I believe that like most of you are preparing for both CCBA and CBAP certification. So I'll just start with the basics because I get this question a lot. So what is the difference between CCBA certification and CBAP certification? So if you have your total BA experience more than 4 plus years, then I would recommend you to go for CCBA certification. If you have more than 8 plus years of BA experience, then it would make sense for you to go for CBAP certification. So the content is going to be the same. For both the certification, you need to go through BAPOC version 3. 
so that is going to be the only syllabus which you need to go through like the, i mean the book is going to remain the same the content is going the questions all will be the same so for both ccb and cbap you need to go through paper portion but what is the difference between ccb Hello. and cbap ccb the questions will be quite straightforward like they will directly ask you what is the input what is the output what are the elements so the questions can be maybe one or two lines uh, the uh, the statement i mean the question statement will be only like one or two or uh, two lines but in case of cbap it is quite different i mean the content is the same they will ask you the input output and element but it will be in the form of a scenario based question case study based question do for both ccb and cbap you need to go through the same book but the way how that question is like for instance here if it is straightforward two line question here the scenario and case study based questions can go for 10 lines on minimum it will be 10 lines and sometimes it can go for two pages also the case study based question can go for two pages so the strategy is different so in case if you are preparing for cbap the way how you prepare the strategy it has to be completely different but when you prepare for ccba you can i mean you can take this for granted like uh, you just need to remember the input output and element and you will definitely clear the certification but in case of cbap not only you need to remember the input output and element you need to analyze the information you need to synthesize that question you need to come up with a recommendation because most of the cbap questions will be from the rec- uh, more of like it will be like a, as a ba what will you do in this situation so more of like a recommendation kind of questions you can expect so that's all about it ccb and cbap now let me show you i do believe you all know about the application process so i'm not going to talk about the application process let me talk about the syllabus uh, ccb and cbap so there are six knowledge areas in babok so uh, for ccb there are 130 questions and for cbap there are 120 questions so all 120 questions will come from this six knowledge areas plus technic so you have you i believe you all know there are 50 techniques in babok like after all the six knowledge areas there are 50 techniques so the questions which you get in both ccb and cbap certification it completely it, it is from the six knowledge areas and their related technique so here you see bapm so in case of ccba you see most of the questions like close to 32% of the questions comes from iidd knowledge area and for cbap i mean ideally all the knowledge areas are equally important but when you prepare for the certification i want you to focus and give more attention to iidd knowledge area the reason is if you don't get more than like out of 42 questions minimum 30 questions you have to get it right if you are not getting more than 30 and rest all knowledge areas you scored you may have to reattempt the certification so if you get lower in a rdd and uh, rest all knowledge areas if you score still you will have to reattempt the certification so give special attention to this rdd knowledge area each and every line in those elements paragraphs are important from the exam perspective so similarly for cbap you guys can see that like 30% of the question is from rdd knowledge area so you see 36 questions so cbap there is around 120 questions so once again let me uh, give you a break up so here you have 130 questions so most of the questions are straight forward okay so i'm i'm just writing it as straight forward or maybe direct questions and uh, maybe some four or five mathematical questions you will get uh, what is mathematical questions so, so mathematical questions can be like return on investment uh, then cost benefit analysis and uh, i mean typical mathematical questions okay and uh, there is an online calculator so it's you just need to remember the formula and estimation uh, estimation questions so these questions you can expect in case of cbap there will be 5 to 6 case study based questions which means that like 30 or 35 questions and then scenario based questions you can expect another 30 or maybe around 40 you can expect and uh, rest 50 you can expect it to be like uh, direct questions will be close to 40 i mean what what do you mean by direct questions uh, similar to the uh, similar to that of the ccba type and rest uh, 10 questions will be mathematical questions so this is the breakup
so this will i mean ideally this is not the exact breakup but this can be used as your reference like when you prepare for the certification right you can keep this breakup in mind like 40 questions from um, scenario based questions and case study based questions you can expect at least five or six case study based questions and uh, direct questions from ccba like uh, what is the input or what is the output what is the best technique those kind of direct questions you can expect minimum 40 and then there'll be at least minimum 10 mathematical questions and uh, don't fret about these mathematical questions you just need to remember the basics of addition subtraction multiplication in order to answer this mathematical questions most of the time it will be simple addition only like you need to calculate the estimated cost estimated effort and benefits and everything so that's all about it so uh, as of now uh, anyone have any questions maybe uh, we'll take a small break uh, uh, like uh, anyone have any questions related to ccb and ciba i have i have one question uh, yes. so like you mentioned that uh, so uh, since i'm appearing for ccba so uh, yes. you just mentioned that four to five mathematical questions would be you know related to cost benefit and other areas so uh, can you like uh, you know give an example like from which chapter like i should prepare most of these kind of mathematical questions yeah so uh, from radd simple decision okay. matrix weighted decision matrix you can expect questions okay. from that in our addd and uh, mm -hmm. from uh, ideally from techniques estimation financial analysis okay thank you yeah and uh, karan yeah what is your question yeah hi sateesh this is karan um, i'm appearing for cbap the eligibility is already through i'm just uh, have to appear for it um, i was in the process of preparing this but uh, good that you uh, karan we cannot hear you yeah karan maybe you can type your question Type Are you able to hear? Yeah, now we can hear. Yeah. Okay, sorry, my bad. So, uh, my question is: Is it is it uh, uh, like is it a prerequisite to pass in, in each and every knowledge area in order to uh, succeed in the CBAP exam, or is it just the RATT which has to be uh, taken care of? Yeah. So, current to answer that question, IBA has not made this logic public. Okay. So, like out of one twenty questions, how many questions you need to get it right? They have not made this public. but what we have seen from our uh, course participant is that you need to score at least 70% in all the knowledge areas like if okay. you score 70% in all knowledge areas then you will be uh -huh. given like a status like comparable if you score okay. 80% then in that case you will go under higher category if you score less than 60% then you will get lower category so what happens is out of six knowledge areas if you get yeah. three lowers in that case okay. you will have to re attack and uh, not only that if you get lower in radd and if you got higher in all other knowledge areas still you will have to re attack so they have not made this logic public so our suggestion is to target comparable in all the six knowledge areas so your target okay. should be comparable that is 70% of the questions you need to get it right in all the six knowledge areas in order to be on the safer side yeah and uh, just uh, like one more thing uh, whenever you get time during this during this uh, session you can just can you just revisit how many questions approximate per knowledge area do we get uh, just to get a hang of it after so whenever you, you get time yeah you can see from this like for cbap like uh, average uh, 17 questions from five knowledge areas and radd you have 36 questions oh yeah but that's that's really good to know thank you so much yeah cool so now let's get started okay so now what i'm going to do is like i'm going to explain to you in layman terms how you can connect the dots okay i don't know if you have already attended my webinar uh, last week uh, i was doing some webinar about like uh, strategy for cbap like the way how you have to read babok so now let me demystify babok for you guys okay and i see i'm going to demystify 500 pages in next 15 minutes so you guys need to know i'm going to uh, like I'm, i'll it will be on a very very high level so uh, what i'm going to do is like in case uh, if you have no idea about babok after this 
now you when you go back and read it you will be able to connect the dots the reason why i'm asking you to connect the dots is babok it is not a guide it is not a reference book and anything it is just like a methodology i mean it is also not a methodology it is just like that like a contribution from fellow bas around the world they thought about like what are the different stages a business analyst has to do in the project so that's why they came up with the six knowledge areas so they decided that like any business analyst or any project if a business analyst is part of it then this should be the knowledge area uh, these are all the activities and tasks that a business analyst has to do so if you see babok it all starts with bapm and then you have elicitation and collaboration and then requirement life cycle management then you have strategy analysis uh, requirement analysis design and uh, requirement analysis design and then you have solution evaluation so you have this six knowledge areas so when you are preparing for the i mean ideally this is the order i mean i have mentioned the order which is there in babok but if you are uh, if uh, if you are that type like i don't want to simply read babok i just oh, want to i, I want I to learn you know, um, 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 yeah hope you can hear me now okay so if you of that type like i just want to understand more about babok like i just i'm curious to know more about those tasks and everything my recommendation is that like first i would recommend you to start with strategy analysis i mean this is not from the exam perspective for exam perspective you need to start with bapm but for those folks who are like uh, uh, preparing on their own i mean self learning and everything right then i would recommend you to start with strategy analysis because everything that is uh, even before a business analyst is on board it it all starts from business need because one day after the business need is identified which is can be a threat or an opportunity one day after it is identified the project will start so one day after the business need is identified the project will start and only then the ba gets on boarded so at this in strategy analysis knowledge area they talk about the importance of business need how it can be identified whether it can be a threat or it can be an opportunity and once the business need is identified you focus on the current state so this project right so ideally what happens in the project so even before you join the project there will be always the current state which we call as assess in our business system analysis so when you as i mean we are all business system analysts right so we all know about the current state and then you talk about the future state like what should be what should be the future uh, system should look like or like what are the requirements business requirements and everything so those things are captured as part of the future state so you analyze the current state you first identify the business need so that is the first task the second task is like once you identify the business need then you analyze the current state i mean i can give examples but like the problem is like uh, if we talk about the examples right i can talk discuss about that example for 30 minutes for each knowledge area and in the interest of time i'm not going to give you any practical examples but uh, you can check out techanvas youtube uh, channel for uh, more uh, live examples like each webinar i have sh- i would have shared one uh, real world examples for each of the knowledge areas check out the uh, techanvas youtube channel so in the interest of time i'm going to i'm not going to talk because that will take a lot of time so once the business need is identified you are analyzing the current state and then as a business analyst you will be given the task of defining the future state so this is like the primary activity like you want to imagine like you know what is the business requirements so at this stage you have captured the business requirements so those business requirements are converted into some some something right you know that like in the future there should be a mobile app in order to place the order and everything right so you define the future state and then nothing can be done overnight so you also need to come up with the change strategy so change strategy is that like uh, for instance now we are in the year 2022 this project should li- should be live in the year 2025 so you have 3 years so now in as part of the change strategy you will come up with some milestones like quarter 1 2022 five percent of the project will be completed quarter 2 2022 15% of the project will be completed and you also talk about the features like what all features will be completed like wise you will mention this is called as change strategy the way how you are going to achieve the future state and what are all the milestones release planning and everything right those are covered as part of the change strategy so as you guys can see uh, in uh, layman terms strategy analysis is all about business need analyzing the current state defining the future state and defining the change strategy so that's all about it so now that is the first task a ba has to do 
I mean, before you, I mean, ideally, when they onboard you to the project, this will be the organization expectation. They would want you to do these things. So now you have worked on strategy analysis. After doing strategy strategy analysis, the next phase of business analyst has to work on BAPM, business analysis, planning, and monitoring. So the keyword which you need to remember is planning and monitoring. So in layman terms, if I have to explain to you what we do as part of this knowledge area, you will plan all BA related stuff. So first, you need to plan the BA approach. Like for instance, uh, the mobile app in 2025. So now the sponsor will ask you what will be the way how business analysis activities will be carried forward. So that is the question. So in order to answer this question, you will say, I'm going to come up with a BA approach. So first thing which a BA has to do is you need to finalize the. So you, the requirements and the scope is clear. Then you can recommend waterfall model. But you feel the requirements are not clear. Then you can recommend agile model. So here at this stage, all the stakeholders will count on you for your input. What should we do next? Whether we should go with waterfall or whether we should go with agile. So you will determine what should be the SDLC approach for the project. And once you identify the SDLC approach, preparing the rest of things is important. I mean, those, those all things will fall in place. Because if you choose agile, then you know it is product backlog, release backlog, sprint backlog, uh, sprint planning, retrospective, and all these. If it is waterfall, BRD, uh, business requirement document, uh, system requirement, uh, SRS, uh, FRD, functional requirement document, user guide, use cases, uh, object diagram, class diagram, sequence diagram, activity diagram, all these things you will have to do it, right? So you will now you write all the list of activities which you will do. And you will also say that like this will be the indicative timeline in which you are going to do this activity or not. So all these things, you will write it in a document and that document is called as B approach. So that is done. And now stakeholder, the next thing is stakeholder engagement approach. So now uh, you know that like this project is going to start. So you get the list of stakeholders. And once you get the list of stakeholders, you are identifying like who has the power of influence or you will try to find out who is the decision maker because these all things really matters, right? For instance, imagine uh, for that mobile app in 2025, 75% uh, of the uh, stakeholders are from uh, GEC countries. And uh, they are in uh, close to 26 departments has to coordinate and uh, work together. So in that case, you need to know who is the decision maker in each of the department. You cannot count all the, imagine there are close to 8,600 uh, stakeholders from 26 departments who, will, who is like directly or indirectly will get impacted because of this mobile app. So uh, when you prepare the stakeholder engagement approach, out of that 8,600 stakeholders, who all are the key decision makers? That you need to find it out. What is the communication preference? That you need to find out. So likewise, you need to find out. I mean, that you, with that, you can go and read Webhawk in detail more like what all things are the other things that you cover as part of the stakeholder engagement approach. And then what happens is, a uh, B approach, stakeholder engagement approach is done. And then comes the very important thing, governance approach. So, so you're going to come up with the guideline documents for that project. So you said we will follow waterfall or you recommended we'll follow agile. Now what happens is you need to tell like what should, what will be the governance approach for the project. So there are four things which a business analyst can control in the project. What are those four, four things? How prioritization will be done in your project? What will be the approval process? What will be the review process? And what will be the change request process? So tomorrow, if somebody is saying that like this requirement has to be prioritized, you would have clearly written the guidelines. In this project, I will follow Moscow only. So if you have clearly written down the guidelines, you will have to follow it. Similarly, tomorrow, somebody is uh, asking for a change in the requirement or like they are suggesting a change. So you're coming up with a process document on how these kind of things will be handled. So like those document, this guidelines document is called as the governance approach. And then comes the information management approach. In information management approach, you talk about the storage. Where are you going to store the BA artifacts and who will have access? I mean, this is how I, have, I can explain in layman terms. These are the two main keywords. So if you remember storage and access, this knowledge area is so, I mean, this task is over. And the last task is BA performance assessment. What do you mean by BA performance assessment? So this task, it talks about 
what how will be the how effective the business analysis is carried out in that particular project whether you are effective and if there is any variance you promise that like you will complete uh, this particular deliverable within monday but you completed only by wednesday so in that case uh, 10% of uh, like uh, the schedule variance is 10% so is it acceptable so those all things are covered as part of the ba performance assessment so that's that's so here if you see in bapm knowledge area it is all about planning business analysis activity and here till uh, information management approach you are writing down the guidelines like uh, you are creating a guidelines document let let me uh, repeat it again this is only the guideline document you haven't started the actual business analysis activity so even before starting the actual ba activities you are preparing yourself with the guidelines document so that's all about bapm So, Now, how many go. artifacts are there total, sir? Like, uh, so there's the plan governance appro- approach, the BA approach. So, like, uh, how many documents in total uh, do you have to produce as per BABOK? Yeah, as per BABOK, uh, you need to create four approaches: so, uh, BA approach, uh, stakeholder engagement approach, governance approach, information management approach. And how long does that take to create each artifact, sir? uh it depends like uh, uh, based on the available uh, input and uh, the support of the stakeholder so there is no timeline that is mentioned in my book it depends upon uh, the input which you get from the stakeholders oh it really depends uh, it really depends on um the the input from from the stakeholders and, but how, like is there a way to innovate on each process like each each iteration do you innovate no. Okay, uh, okay. there is no scope for innovation because this is something which you need to prepare as a business analyst you need to come up with the guidelines so okay. the problem is here at this juncture if mm-hmm. the data is not available uh, that may you cannot innovate and you cannot think about because the data for instance stakeholder engagement approach 8600 stakeholders i gave you an example so uh-huh. if you are not getting the support from uh, like uh, the key folks like whose voice really matters or who is the decision maker so like you have to you are completely dependent on the stakeholders or the information organizational assets in order to come up with those guidelines so here i would say 10% of the effort is from your end 90% of your effort it is uh, completely depends upon the information that is uh, avail- available to you Oh, okay that makes sense sir so then then you, when you look at when you look at the artifact uh, to come up with the stakeholder approach stakeholder approach engagement approach as well as the business analysis approach you you have to uh, you have to look at those parts in in, in the babok to to replicate that yes okay thank you sir thank you sir okay cool so now let's talk about the next knowledge area elicitation and collaboration this is one of the most easiest knowledge area wherein you can score 100 out of 100 okay because if you are if you cannot if you are not able to i mean if this particular knowledge area if you are not able to score 100 out of 100 then i am not sure because this is something because bapm strategy analysis is not something which we do in our real world uh, business analysis activities i mean we cannot i mean we just need to go through those theory practically we cannot implement it but whatever we read in elicitation and collaboration is something that you can practically relate so even if they ask scenario based questions or anything you guys can take an educated guess so let me tell you what are the most easiest knowledge area uh, wherein you can score like if there are 15 questions wherein you you will score 15 out of 15 or like where you can score 100% so elicitation collaboration is easiest bapm is easiest and uh, solution evaluation is easiest so these are the three knowledge areas wherein if you want to like practically score uh, higher i mean i showed you i told you about uh, higher right 80% of the questions if you get it right you will get that higher time so these are the three easiest knowledge areas like maybe two hours or three hours is more than enough in order to understand those particular knowledge areas the toughest one is rdd uh, obviously that's the reason they have given 30% coverage strategy analysis is like if you have little bit a little bit understanding of what is strategic consulting what mbb guys does like uh, mckinsey bcg what do they really uh, do like a uh, little bit of strategic consulting experience if you have this knowledge area is a piece of cake but uh, a strategy consulting is completely new to you then you will have to go through the babok content and refresh requirement life cycle management is similar to that of radd so if you are clear with uh, radd concept then uh, requirement life cycle management is also easy i mean i would say this is tough uh, i mean ideally uh, if i have to rate it 75% uh, it is complex our requirement life cycle management is only 50% complex okay so 
that's all about it i mean ideally if you're starting your preparation this would uh, i mean ideally you know which area to concentrate okay now let's come back elicitation and collaboration i'll talk about elicitation and collaboration so elicitation and collaboration is like the bread and butter for a business analyst because ideally a business analyst what is the role of a business analyst in the project we need to get the data elicit the data so uh, ideally uh, uh, we will do the elicitation and we also need to have a it's good collaboration with all the stakeholders so in layman terms this is what you need to remember and now let me talk about the task first thing you need to prepare for elicitation so you do the homework then out, uh, you know that like uh, this particular guy uh, hr from uh, finance department uh, is the key decision maker so you will try to say like i'm going to have the first meeting with him so but the problem is that like uh, he's a senior resource and he's uh his calendar is always booked so you are like wondering what kind of elicitation meeting i should have then finally you got a 30 minutes slot you cannot involve him in uh, workshops and everything because he is like uh, his calendar is completely filled uh, completely full so in that case you are scheduling an interview you are preparing a list of questions like you have some 15 questions so you are going to ask that question like what will be the agenda you are preparing the agenda in case if you have to book uh, the meeting logistics and everything so those things are taken care as part of preparing for elicitation the homework which a business analyst has to do so that is covered in detail in babok and then you are going to conduct elicitation so there are more than 15 to 20 elicitation techniques in babok like brainstorming focus group reviews workshop interviews and uh, prototyping uh, observation um, decision modeling process modeling scope modeling so many there are close to 15 plus uh, elicitation techniques so here you choose that appropriate elicitation technique and uh, once you do the elicitation like for instance you ask some questions to the stakeholder the output is recorded here and that output is called as elicitation results unconfirmed okay so many uh, folks uh, they get confused that like if i do elicitation Uh, i will get some data from the stakeholders that is like a biggest misunderstanding when you do elicitation the output is not requirements because i you are asking me like what what was the percentage that was implemented the bonus percentage for the employees last year so that is my question to the hr and hr is giving me a percentage like last year the bonus was close to 8% so that is not a requirement that is going to be the elicitation result when i ask something to that particular person the output will be always elicitation results unconfirmed because the person would have told me 8% but uh, i i would have like uh, i mean i would have heard it as 6% so there can be some confusions right like or the person is not sh- sure so at uh, at the at that moment uh, he, uh, he will say i'm not sure but uh, maybe it may be 8% so in that case what i'll do is like these elicitation results which are unconfirmed right in next stage i'm going to confirm those elicitation results so i can either check it with the sources all the existing documentation i can check it or i can check with the same person again so i ask uh, we discuss this and you told me the percentage is 8% do you agree with this so if that person says yeah i agree with this then i'm going to take that word as final so i'm going to confirm those elicitation results and then i am doing multiple elicitation meetings right so everybody wants to know what is the information which i have gathered so i am going to put it in a word document or in a ppt document and i am going to send a list to all the stakeholders i am clearly telling them i did the elicitation meeting for the last two weeks i had discussions with the finance team admin team transport team and everybody and uh, this is the information which i have gathered i have put all the information in the form of a ppt for your review so that you will have to do and finally what you have to do is like you need to also ensure that all the stakeholders are happy so this is like a very important thing because if you read babok you are in multiple places in babok they have underlined the importance of soft skills for the business analyst i mean that is like a very important skill so here uh, as part of the stakeholder collaboration it is imperative that the business analyst shows more interest towards the stakeholders keep them involved tell them what is the big picture so it talks about the soft skills of the business analyst like how to engage the stakeholders so that's all about elicitation and collaboration one of the easiest knowledge area 30 pages and uh, hardly 2 hours or 3 hours is more than enough to cover that knowledge area now let me talk about rlm and radd so rlm and radd can be read parallelly uh, and can be done parallelly also you can read it parallelly and you can uh, in real world also you can do it parallelly also so now what happens is this elicitation results are getting converted into requirements and design so now what you do is 
you trace those requirements. So you will try to find out the dependency between the requirements. You can come up with the requirement traceability matrix. Then you uh, then you can after trace requirements, then you can prioritize those requirements, and uh, you can maintain those requirements. So these are all the different stages. I mean, this is what we projects also we do this right we maintain the requirements we prioritize the requirements and then uh, we verify those requirements we validate those requirements so these are all the different stages then the very very important thing from the exam perspective is specify and model requirements like 100% you can expect a, a question from this particular task specify and model requirements wherein you convert those requirements into different categories and you try to find out which category for instance the requirement is related to user interacting with the system user is clicking on one particular button so in that case these type of requirements can be better explained in the form of use case diagram so likewise what you do is you model those uh, this, you specify those requirements whenever this particular user story is there user is interacting with the bu button i can better depict that requirement through use case diagram or um, one more requirement is that like uh, for instance admin user will have access to this particular page so these kind of requirements i can express it through cidud matrix or uh, create read update delete or i can also use uh, a rasi matrix also responsible accountable consulted and informed so likewise you guys need to connect the dots there that's the reason i told you specify and model requirements 100% you can expect a question either it can be a technique related question scenario based questions or case study based questions so these all task you do as part of like you play with requirements you create it you check for the consistency uh, check for the grammar and you check whether all the requirements are written as per the business need as part of the validation so these all things are taken uh, considered as part of rad and something which uh, uh, less chances uh, wherein you would have done in your real world is something we call it as requirement architecture so requirement architecture is part of radd which is something more about viewpoints and views so i'm i'm not going to talk about it more because i i can talk about it for a hour okay but let me give you a heads up so there you need to understand what is a viewpoint and what is a view so if you understand this this particular task is over and uh, this will be the only confusing part in the overall knowledge area and the entire book this one particular task is the outlier because the rest all things even if you read you will be able to understand but this particular task no way you will be able to remember because in order to do requirement architecture you should have worked in ibm rational uh, rose software those kind of softwares i mean ideally uh, we used this uh, software before 2000 2000 to 2008 ideally before the advent of uh, hp quality center jira and all we were using ibm rational rose uh, requisite pro and everything so only when you know that particular tool you will be able to understand what is this viewpoints and view so this particular thing you can explore it and then that's all about radd yeah the very important thing is design options so there are only as per babock for any solutioning so as if uh, as a ba if you are part of the solutioning there are only three things that are before you you can either create it you can purchase it or you can do the combination of both so there is a problem that like the sales is down okay and uh, in case uh, they want to come up with a application in order to increase the sales so this is the business need okay so now you are thinking about like what should you do so you are thinking about investing uh, uh, creating a new crm application because sales is directly connected to the crm system so you want a new crm system so now what you can do is if uh, be as a business analyst if you are involved in the solutioning part you need to think about these three options should we create a crm system from the scratch so here you are doing that uh, research cost benefit analysis and you are providing your recommendation or should i use any crm existing crm from the market like uh, salesforce i can use salesforce or i can use sibel likewise you are doing a research which would cater to your requirement or should i buy salesforce and customize according to my needs so as a business analyst here after going through all the requirements and everything you need to decide whether should we build it uh, from our particular we'll hire a development team 
and should we do it um, in, with the help of our in-house team or should we buy it from outside or should we do this customization? So this is called as design options. So business analysts need to analyze this from the cost benefit pers perspective and finally recommend a solution. So this is only recommend a solution. So I'll just write it down also. And recommend a solution is like 100% you can expect scenario based questions here. So they will give you a scenario. Acme Corporation is like uh, having this particular problem and they have uh, finally uh, drilled down to three solutions. And first solution, this is the cost, this is the benefit and everything. And then as a, as a business analyst, what would be your recommendation? So likewise, you can expect scenario based questions from this particular task, which is the RADD last task, recommend a solution. Definitely you can expect a scenario based question. So that's all about RLM and RADD. And the last task is solution evaluation, which is the most easiest one. So you promised a lot of things to the client. You said that like if this CRM is implemented, the sales will increase 150%. A number of uh, users will increase uh, one, uh, uh, 1 million. Likewise, you promised a lot of things. And you will see that like uh, the uh, order transaction speed will increase, uh, will uh, decrease to five seconds. So you promise a lot of things and then finally stakeholders agree to your idea and that particular thing is in the production. Now sponsor wants to know what was promised, is it delivered or not? So now sponsor wants to find out, did sales increase more than 150%? And uh, did the number of users increase more than 1 million? So you can do this with prototype or you can do this with that of the uh, solution which is there in the production. So in order to do solution evaluation, it has to be there in the production or some companies based on their risk tolerance, they will do it with that of the prototype also. So now you try to find out the variance. So you're going to do a testing. So now you will check out uh, how many users are onboarded. So you uh, earlier it was around uh, 1 million. So this after six months in the production, number of users increased only by uh, just 20,000 uh, users got increased. So in this case, what was promised was not delivered. So here it is a big mess. And you said order transaction time will take only less than five seconds. So now you will do a testing in the production. So you will place multiple orders. And here you found out that like one, one order was taking eight seconds. Another order was taking 15 seconds. And, uh, Another order is another four seconds. So you see there is an anomaly. So like eight, 15 and four and everything. So in that case, this is also a big mess. So now what you have to do is you need to find out what is going wrong. So there are two ways why it is going wrong. Either it can be a solution limitation or it can be an enterprise limitation. So your job is to find out is there anything problem, any technical problem in the application that you need to find out. Or is there any other non-technical problem that you need to find out? And finally, then as a business analyst, you need to recommend solution in order to increase value. See, uh, after all, I, uh, the firm invested more than 50, uh, maybe 5 million in this particular project. Believing all your uh, promises, like this, all things will be delivered, potential benefits and everything. So now what, like if the benefit is not, if they are not able to get that benefit, they cannot, uh, opportunity cost, sunk cost, lot of things are referred here, but this 5 million is at stake. Okay, the in total project, uh, whatever they've invested. So now what you can do is like, you need to finally recommend because if it is a technical problem, we can resolve it so that this can, this can go back, like we'll make it as 2 million. So what can we do in order to increase the number of users? So what can we do in order to ensure that like order transaction is taking less than five seconds? You need to provide those recommendations. This is also a hundred percent scenario based questions, which you can expect in your CVAP. Like definitely there will be a scenario based questions from this particular task. So once again, I a strategy. And then you can follow ENC and RL, RLM and RDD can be done parallelly. And finally, it ends with the solution evaluation knowledge area. Okay, cool. So now what we do is like we'll do some more questions and then I'll take, uh, I mean, I'll answer all your questions. So let me show you what kind of questions you can expect. Like, so uh, this is like I'm using Tech Canvas question bank. So in case if you are interested in opting for this question bank, you can reach out to Tech Canvas team. Like we have close to 1000 plus questions, which is, closely related to the IABA standards, in fact, tougher than the actual IABA questions. The reason why I'm saying you it is tougher is 
if you score 65 percent in the canvas uh, mock questions then definitely you will clear the uh, actual examination so that's the that's the level of complexity like uh, nobody will score i mean ideally the max uh, we have seen that our participants have scored only 72 percent because our, our questions are very very tough so let's uh, practice some questions i want you to unmute and tell me the reasoning or the logic uh, which you are thinking like why are you going with that particular option so we'll do some 10 questions now initially in order to expose you so this is a ccba question okay so who wants to take a guess i mean not a guess i want you to also tell me the reasoning why you're going with that particular option you guys can all unmute uh, yourself and uh, i mean let's see Hi, Satish. Yeah, Anshu, what is your guess? <laughs> okay, so the educated guess is um, it's a preventive measure. Yeah, preventive. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So I'm just locking preventive. Why preventive? So I think he's uh, basically taking a, a preventive measure of. Uh, you know, uh, keeping a duplicate database uh, to avoid, uh, you know, okay. different risks. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, let's lock it. I'll go to the next question. This is also a CCBA question. It would be C. Mm -hmm. Financial so the following factor does not affect the business analysis approach. Yes. Okay. Any other answers? Uh, a no business, no business policy. Financial position. Financial position. Cool. I heard two answers. So, so in that case, I'm locking it. Let me go I to the next question. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Expert. Why? Why can't it be expert judgment? Because financial position something. Um, um, like the budget of the com budget of from the sponsor is also a very crucial thing here. So I don't yeah. think it would be seen in this case. Yeah, that's right, a good so answer. So anyway, we, will check, we will check the results uh, uh, towards the end. We will go through. We will review all the answers. Okay. So that's okay. a very good uh, reasoning. So uh, anyway, I'll go with uh, option C because I heard two or three folks uh, telling me about option C. So let me go to the next question. So this is also a CCBA question. This should be C. Okay. Any other answers? Tricky question. Okay. Mm. Which of the following task act as an input for the ongoing work? <coughs> Straightforward question. So for CBAP folks, these kind of questions, you should take only 15 seconds. If you remember the input for information management approach then you know the answer what is the input for information management approach then it should be b it should be b <laughs> governance, governance approach is b because there <laughs> must be approval the, they're yeah. asking you what is the following task that acts as an input so the question is clear okay let me go to the next question this is a cbap question So there is a change request, okay? So what are the things that you need to consider before analyzing that change request? Like what do you need to keep in mind? As per BAPOC, not from the real world. I think it's A, cost, time, yeah. estimates, benefits, and risk. As per Good. Yeah. Yeah. So all things fine, yeah. I'll go to the next question. Which type of stakeholder we need to keep satisfied throughout the project? So this is a CCBA question, and this is a direct question from the technique. So stakeholder yeah, list map. Yeah. A. A. Yeah. This a. should be B. 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 It, yeah. is, it is B. Influences high impact flow. Okay. No, I'll go so with B as well. 
what are the other four quadrants other than keep satisfied um keep informed Inform, monitor monitor and, and engage engage good let me go to the next question this is a ccba question Eba, folks, you should take only fifteen seconds. See, are you sure? Option C. Mm -hmm. It is A. Business plan. It should be A. Mm -hmm. But business plan is not a term in Babook. Yes. Practically, yes. Is, do you guys think business plan? Mentioned about no. No, I see. See, okay, yeah. So I'll we'll go to the next question. This is a CBAP question. So, who should be involved in the planning D. and monitoring of B and D. activities? D. Okay, so you say A, B, and C. Mm. No operation support manager is not involved. Okay. No. Any other answers? I would say all the four. Okay. Any other answers? All the four and no, B. I'll stay with A, B, and C. A, B, and C. Yeah, it okay. should be A, B, C. I'll go to the next question. Which of the factors should the BA consider to decide upon the timing and frequency of approvals? Stay. Size and associated risk of delaying the approval. Okay. Any other answers? This is a CBAP question. Hmm. Option I'm e. thinking D, but I'm not sure. Okay. D. Yeah, A. Are you okay? A. Okay, I'm hearing so many A's, so I'm just locking option A. B. Okay, B or B. Anyway, we'll check the answers later. So this is a CCBA question. Which of the following is not a factor in identifying the stakeholders? B. Last one. Availability. The last one. D. Yeah. Yeah. D. Now the last question. What is the impact on B approach when the number of stakeholders increases? B. 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 Option B. Okay. Additional B. steps to manage B work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's check the answer. I would say C. It's it's not it's not uh, defined. Yeah, nine. Okay. Nine out of ten is a very good figure. So let. Uh, go by the uh, let's do a review each answer so the first question you guys got it right the answer is preventive because the uh, duplicate database in sync and you already know that, that is going to happen so you're preparing yourself for the worst so in that case it is preventive corrective is that like something has happened and you want to reduce the impact so improvement is not there hybrid is not there in webhawk you have only corrective and preventive so let me tell you a pro tip for both CCB and CBAP certification, you are going to get only four options. In that four options, two options can be easily eliminated because uh, you wouldn't have, you know that like those two are not related to that particular question. So here I know these two are not related. So I'm going to eliminate this. And out of the other two, I need to find out, I mean, this question is pretty straightforward, but for CBAP scenario-based question, there will be a good answer there will be the best answer. 
so you need to find out which is the best answer uh, the reason why many folks fall into the trap is they will always click on the good answer and they assume that this right but in uh, what iba wants is they want you to choose the right answer in the context see here it is not about recommendation like here they are asking you what kind of action is taken by ben so either he can go with preventive or he can go with correct but i do always wants you to choose the best answer according to babock so that's when you need to find out so whenever there is a recommendation kind of question what is the best answer out of the two you need to find out the second type of question is like a direct question they'll ask you a direct question so in that case one will be the right answer the other one will be the right answer based on the real world scenario like in your real world be experience you will do that so in that case uh, you will you should not click on option b because you should always go with babock version not with the real world version so that is also the another classic trap second question you guys got it wrong let's see yeah so here the answer is uh, none of these because if you see babock planning business analysis approach does consider business policies expert judgment as guidelines a weak financial position is a risk for the project so business analysts do consider the financial stability while developing the b approach this is directly from babock uh satish just one thing here so a and b uh, is the guidelines and tools i know from the b approach right yeah but c um, i have not read about risk in that b approach so yeah okay. so this financial position yeah. comes under mm -hmm. risk element mm -hmm. so you see in bapm uh, in a b approach there are six uh, element right the last element so last element talks about risk so there they would have mentioned about the financial position uh, right okay risk there is a ba risk right there they have mentioned about that So, rest all questions. You got it right. So, here it is: governance approach, straightforward question. And here it is: cost, time, benefit, and risk. You got it right. And uh, who needs to be kept satisfied? It is only those folks who are high influence and low impact. And uh, there is no business plan. So that's what I was warning you. See, business plan in the real world, we would have heard about business plan, but according to Babock, there is no concept called business plan. And the reason why they will add these kind of words is to make you fall into that trap. They will add all the words which you, which we use in our, uh, 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 I mean, in our current uh, projects, right? All those BA lingos and BA vocabulary they will add only in order to make you fall into their trap. Question seven. You guys got it right. It is A, B, and C because operation support manager is not is not a stakeholder as per Babock. There is no operation support manager in Babock. So if you guys know that, like all these things, you will never fall into this trap. Question. It always it depends upon the size and complexity because it is directly mentioned in Babock section three point three point four point four. Question nine. availability of the stakeholder is not a factor in identifying the stakeholders you decide it based on their organizational hierarchy as well as their role in the business process and the last question requirement of additional steps so here it is mentioned complexity and risk an increase in the number of stakeholders may have additional steps for approval reviews and even elicitation meetings clear so how is your confidence now with respect to the exam i mean now let me show you the case study based questions okay how case study based questions will look like uh sithi just one question so can i expect case study question in cck uh for ecb there will be no case study based questions no 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 ccba Oh, yeah no CCB. no case study based questions it will be only direct questions okay. so for uh, cbap folks 
minimum five to six case study based questions will be there. Okay, so I'm just opening the first case study based question. So you guys can see the question can go for two to three pages also. Okay, two to three pages. So you see here, introduction is there, product array and details, assess forecasting, problem statement, business requirement, problem solving, expectation, solution blueprint, and then you will have five questions. So this is how case study based questions will be there. Minimum five case study based questions. So five into six, thirty questions. Okay. So what should be the strategy here? The strategy here is. Don't waste your time reading all the content. Just skim through. Don't waste. If you are wasting your time, this is going to take more than fifteen minutes to understand about this case study. So don't waste your time. The very moment when you get a case study based questions, and if it's going for more than two pages, if it is a single page question, okay. But if it goes for more than two pages, second. In that case, you just need to skim through the content. Maybe thirty seconds or one minute, you go through the content. And then directly go to the question. So here, you go directly to the question. Sixty to seventy percent of the case study based questions can be directly answered without reading those paragraphs. Only thirty percent of the questions you need to go through those paragraphs. So. Which of the below listed technique is best suited for making reports for the reporting module? So here the question is about the technique. So you need not understand the context. So which of the technique do you think is best suited for making reports? Reporting. Data mining. Perfect. Why data mining? Because it uh, helps you to uh, identify a trend or a pattern and give some meaningful awesome. insight awesome. into the report. I, I, I define the trend and pattern, and as per Bepok. the last stage in data mining is creating reports that's all let me see i told you you need not go through the context you can directly answer with your current level of preparation itself there is no separate preparation for case study based questions whatever you are preparing for scenario based questions and direct questions the same preparation is enough for case study based question there is no need of extra practice which of the below listed option is the best variation for the database module so this is from the uh, technique uh, section so data modeling physical physical data model this is a straight forward question because it's already mentioned in webbox physical data model can be used for database so now phil has asked jack to submit a report of expected solution benefit cost of creating the solution cost of operating the solution and potential risk impact which technique will jack use to make this report financial analysis estimate okay estimation or financial analysis estimate in the beginning estimation estimation because it is expected, expected solution expected. which means you need to estimate the keyword here is expected, expected. financial analysis is something that you do afterwards post mortem <laughs> Now, with reference to sponsor definition in BAPOC and information in the case study, who is the sponsor for BAL? This question you cannot directly answer. So now, what you go, you will skim through the content and you will try to find out that information. So here they are asking you, who is the sponsor for BAL? Okay, the question is, who is the sponsor? So, so now you go here and you try to find out where are they mentioning about BAL. so it is not there in the first paragraph not there in the second table not there in the third paragraph here also it is not there yeah this year 
you can see bal mentioned here so i guess if i just need to read through this line these two lines and then come up with who is the sponsor Who's the sponsor for BL? Both Matthew and Phil. Okay, any other answer? Matthew. Okay, Matthew. Any other answers? Okay, I guess time up. What is the answer? Matthew. Okay. Matthew. Matthew is the wrong answer because according to the sponsored <laughs> definition in the book, the person will be accountable. So here, if you see, only Phil is accountable. The keyword. That's I'm what. Sure. You need to remember the keyword. In keyword, if you go and read sponsored definition in the book, they would have clearly mentioned. Sponsor is somebody who is accountable and who can be the approval authority. So when I look into this paragraph, I see Phil as accountable. So that gives me the first clue that he is the sponsor. Guys can go through the explanation. So the keyword from Babok. For sponsor is accountable. accountable. Now the next question: If you follow Gaines Arsen notation, and if you are keeping forecasting process as the central application, demand generation can be described by which of the below listed options? So here, if you need to know what is Gaines Arsen notation, so like data flow diagram and everything. So here you have uh, gain. Uh, I mean. This is forecasting application, so this is demand generation. So, like, what is the connection between demand generation and forecasting? Is it input data, or whether it is external agent or data source, or none of the above? External agent. The diagram is there in the book. I'll show you what is Gaines Arsen notation first. So this is a very easy question. Okay, I'll just show you what is Gaines Arsen notation. So entity is represented like this, process is represented like this, data store is represented like this, data flow is represented like this. Now tell me, let's go back to the diagram. What is demand generation? Data source. Oh, it is a rectangle here. Yeah. To data source, external, external, external agent. agent. External agent. It is an external yeah. agent. I mean, yeah, the external agent is not, yeah. It is here, I guess. External entity. You see here, external entity mentioned here. Data store is like this. Process is like this. So you need to remember the notation. That's all.
so you see five questions based out of one two three so likewise you can expect minimum five to six case study questions so my recommendation is that like go for any uh, iba uh, endorsed training provider question bank at least two or three full length mock examinations i would recommend you to uh, give and if you are scoring 70% 60 to 70% in those full length mock examinations then you are ready for the final examination okay cool so that that's what i wanted to cover today now i'll go through all your questions more like anything related to the certification let me stop sharing my screen i got more than 25 messages uh how important are the uh, perspectives and competencies from exam perspective exam point of view okay the perspectives you completely avoid not even mm -hmm. a single question will come from perspectives competencies two to three questions can come okay and uh, you need to remember all those skills like uh, communication skills mm -hmm. verbal skills uh, all those skills names you need to remember that's it okay. it's true for cbap as well yes yes okay thank you uh sati is this uh session will be avail available on a recurrent session um, it will be uploaded in the youtube channel tech canvas youtube channel or you can reach out to nasni or brijesh they will be able to share the recording with you okay so uh, sachesh good afternoon yeah uh, no. okay i would like to yes i would like to find out the for the cbap examination do we really need to kind of uh, you know put into consideration the output or for example um the fact that we're using a particular output are we supposed to put those ones into consideration while reading and yeah. also okay and also the the tool the tools and elements are we supposed to also you know because there are so many tools so many elements in some of these tasks yeah okay to answer that question ernest if you ask me should i memorize i'll say it is not possible for us to memorize all of it but uh, if you ask me should i remember it i'll say yes <laughs> reason is all you have is only 2 minutes for one question and uh, in case if you are not able to recollect like what are those elements in that particular knowledge area you will be wasting your time like you will think about that you will not be able to uh, like uh, i mean you will not be able to spend time in case study based questions and everything i mean or those difficult questions so it is always a good practice and this is this particular task from this knowledge area immediately the input output and the elements should flash in your mind that level of preparation you should have earnest because that will help you in clearing the exam in your first attempt because the uh, uh, your time management skills are taken care because the very moment if input and output if you are able to remember it well and good how should we tackle the question paper should we do the uh, case studies first or should we just leave them for the last after doing the direct questions so the easier ones uh, case study questions can break our confidence first because uh, our brain will not look into the question our brain will look into the content so my recommendation is case study based questions don't even uh, uh, what to say <laughs> don't even scroll through like how many how many questions or how many pages it is mark it complete all those smaller questions and then uh, you will have adequate time for the case study based questions uh, you do all the case study based questions once you get a immense confidence after clearing all those direct questions and scenario based questions right uh, once you clear it right you will have immense confidence with that confidence you attempt case study based questions okay and how about the time available is it adequate really? more than 90 uh, 90% of the folks completed the certification within 2 hours itself 2 to 2 and a half hours itself that's the reason i told you you give, go for at least two full length mock uh, series so like a full a full length mock so that your time management skills are taken care there okay. uh, satish i had one question yeah uh, oh, am i audible yeah 
So, yeah, this might sound silly. So, uh, I want to ask, uh, so I have given the mock in first attempt, I got 60 and then second attempt, I get 75. So, can I consider that I am? Uh, yeah, the mock, uh, the tech back canvas. Yeah, so the okay, second test is 75 and the uh, uh, questions did not repeat, right? The no, question does repeat. Second time, of course, it repeats because there are only three uh, simulations, right? So, uh, in some I got 50, then 60, like that. Yeah. First time, uh, uh, first attempt. No, <laughs> That's what I was asking. All the thousand questions in tech canvas is exhausted. All the more questions. Did you exhaust all the thousand questions? Did you cover all the thousand questions in the Canvas mock? Uh, yeah. So there are, I guess, three, uh, three ninety, which are three simulations. So that uh, I have attempted. Those practice questions in you see they write practice questions for each of the chapters. Yes, yes, those yes. Yeah, that I have tried. Hmm? Then you are ready for the chapter. Yes. Okay. And just one more question, uh, Satish. So, uh, out of my uh, like uh, practice sessions, I have uh, experienced that uh, guidelines and tools is something I'm not able to remember. And there are questions based on that. So, how do I, you know, tackle those three questions? Or four. In three or four. Exam? Yeah. Out of 120 questions, minimum three or four questions can come from guidelines and tools, and that will be very okay. tough to remember because focus on input. Yeah. Yeah. Focus more on input, output, and element. Guidelines and tools, stakeholders, take an educated guess. That's all. Only possibility here. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so uh, I'm a business analyst from more than three years. Now I want to go for some certification to support my career growth. Which one should I start with? Go for CCBA. If you have mo more than three years, then you can do CCBA certification. <laughs> And Olami, uh, they can uh, full length mock exams on Tech Canvas. Can I take it multiple times? There are only three full length mock uh, exams, like close to 1,000 questions. And that 1,000 questions is more than enough for Olami. Any other questions, guys? You guys can check out this recording in YouTube channel. Yeah, Vikram has shared the YouTube channel link. Hi. Hey, please, Satish. Hey. Yes. So um, the question I had was um, if we could, I could take it like several times. Let's say I tried to test one, the first mock exam, and I tried like twice. If I go down to the, okay. or I can just do it once. That's what I was asking. Yeah. I could read more than one time. Is that what you say? Okay, okay. Uh, can I take it multiple times? Yeah, you can use it multiple times, yes. Okay, thanks so much. Yeah. Okay, okay, guys. If you have no questions, if you have any questions, you can reach out to the Tech Canvas support team. They will answer all your queries. So I believe uh, today's session was like at least maybe one step, your first step towards your certification or those folks who are preparing for the certification, a little bit of, I mean, a small, uh, maybe for your strategy, something uh, it would have contributed is what I believe. So if you have any comment or suggestions or feedback, please reach out to the Tech Canvas team. So we'll connect in our next uh, webinar. Thank you guys for joining and have a great day ahead. Thank you, Satish. Thank you, Satish. Thanks so much. Or do exam time when we want to renew? No, uh, you have to give it only one time, and every three years you need to renew your certification just by attending some trainings. That's all. <laughs>